Hello, my name is Karen Lees, and I'm uh, here representing the Allegheny Chamber of Economic Development today. In 2013, eight years ago, I began working toward gaining local interest with the North Carolina Historic Historical Preservation and gleaning information from our Mount Airy friend, Jean Reese. Jean came to Sparta and presented a public forum showing the benefits of having a designated downtown Sparta National Historic District. Jean connected us with the right people in the North Carolina State Historic Preservation Office and also noteworthy, I found some old Allegheny newspaper articles from 1980, 40 years ago, when some other good folks tried unsuccessfully for this designation. This has been a long time coming Today, I'm happy to report, we have made great progress with the help of many friends. I will have to say the most important reason we are successful to this point is the National Register Advisory Committee added the Downtown Sparta Historic District to the National Register Study List. This opened the door for our current position, which is a proposal for a permanent designation. Also, we named a very hardworking and dedicated committee consisting of Ricky Brown, Attorney Jim Lambie, Joyce Wigan, and myself. We successfully fundraised $13,000 from our generous community, and we are deeply grateful for their confidence in our efforts. This $13,000 funded the required study or survey as it is formally named. The survey is a study of the buildings in the designated area, it is a one-time expense, and it remains a perpetual document. For example, Mount Erie is using a 40-year-old survey for their ongoing historic preservation projects. <clears throat> Excuse me. This fund allowed us to contract with one of North Carolina's best architectural historians, Laura Phillips, and she has recently completed Sparta's survey. Laura Phillips will follow this video with a detailed report of her findings. And I must tell you that Laura has been a very positive trooper driving from Winston-Salem, coming up to our beautiful mountains during a pandemic, during earthquakes and inclement weather. Many of our local historians have enjoyed working with her and we are most grateful for everyone's participation. Laura is now Sparta's friend in perpetuity. This effort has not been easy, but nothing worthwhile is ever easy. You might ask, why would we want Sparta to be a designated historic district? In a nutshell, it is important to preserve our historic resources. Have you ever truly looked at an old storefront? Looked at the front windows, thick glass? Have you looked at the old brick and the wood? We feel akin to this nostalgic hardscape and have satisfaction in reusing existing buildings instead of tearing them down and building new ones. If elements are historically significant or unusual, they can also be a source of community pride and lead to other improvements. Historic buildings can be affordable for businesses to rehabilitate because of the possible tax incentives, grants, or other financial support. In addition, they may attract business in and of themselves simply because people are often fascinated by those old buildings. The historic designation can provide direct benefits for your property for future development opportunities. Qualifying projects may be eligible for both state and federal tax credits that can be used to help fund improvements. Tax credits of up to 20% state and 20% federal are possible on ordinary income. Prosperity zone tax benefits could be uh, beneficial as well. Listing in the National Register is largely an honorary designation that can generate substantial benefits for property owners. It's a spoke in the wheel for Allegheny's economic development. Communities such as Elkin, Lansing, West Jefferson have achieved this designation and have seen increased capital investments appreciating property values, all the while protecting historic resources. The next, this next statement is very important. This designation does not prohibit any changes to a building by the owner. But if you desire to qualify for the tax credits, there are some restrictions. 
Evidence is abundant that property values increase with historic preservation improvements. Allegheny has been very slow to desire the status for Sparta to become a national historic district. There are only 10 North Carolina counties that have not achieved this. Unfortunately, we're one of the 10, but now we're very close to our goal. And thanks to many of you that have helped, the next step is a required public meeting and that date and time are to be announced. The final step in this process is on Thursday, October 14th, when the National Register Advisory Committee will advise whether the State Historic Preservation Officer should forward it to the National Park Service. The National Park Service will have the final say as to whether Sparta is officially a National Register listed. Of course, we are hopeful this plan will come together. We thank you for your time and your interest in this project and stay tuned for further updates. And please contact the Allegheny Chamber of Economic Development for more information. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Jennifer Cathy. I am a restoration specialist for the State Historic Preservation Office working out of Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm here today to tell you about the historic rehabilitation tax credits. Now that you are getting a historic district in Sparta, uh, that means that, that the buildings uh, that are listed as contributing in the National Register Historic District are gonna be eligible to apply for these historic rehab tax credits. So let me get my screen up and running and I'm gonna show you some photos of some successful uh, rehab tax credit projects in Western North Carolina and give you the basics of the tax credits. So here we go. Right. So don't feel like you need to absorb all of the details about these, these tax credits. It is kind of a, a complex program, but for right now, just feel um, comfortable in knowing that this program is available for buildings that are listed in the National Register of Historic Places. And me and other staff of the State Historic Preservation Office are available to talk to you about it, talk to property owners about it, uh, and get people on track to benefit from the tax credits. So um, the tax credits are, are sort of a, a benefit communities in a lot of different ways. Uh, at a most basic level, they are providing economic incentive for property owners and developers to invest in National Register listed buildings. But over and above that, they benefit local economies uh, and they help in the revitalization of, of towns and neighborhoods. So what's a tax credit? It's not the same as a tax deduction, but a, a tax credit uh, provides a dollar for dollar reduction in the amount that a taxpayer owes. Um, and so, you know, hypothetically, if you have a $10,000 tax bill and a $4,000 tax credit, you're going to reduce your tax owed to $6,000. We've got two historic rehab tax credits available here in North Carolina. The first is the tax credit for income producing buildings. So this, this most often applies to your downtown uh, commercial buildings. So a certified rehabilitation, that's a building rehab that for which there's a tax credit application and for which there is review at the state and the federal level, state and the federal levels. Um, the owner or the developer can qualify to earn a 20% federal tax credit against their qualified rehab expenses. And that gets piggybacked by a 15 to 25% state income tax credit. So in Allegheny County, due to the county tier designation assigned by the Department of Commerce, a commercial property owner can stack a 20% tax credit on top of a federal, a 20% federal tax credit. 
offsetting qualified rehab expenditures by 40%. So that's a pretty significant incentive um, to go for these tax credits. The other rehab, historic rehab tax credit that's available in North Carolina is for owner occupied residential buildings. Now, I don't know if you've got any houses in your new historic district, but you might potentially have uh, owner occupied resi residential units, i.e. maybe a condo unit inside the shell of a commercial building. Um, but this state rehab tax credit, uh, again, it's for certified, that's approved uh, rehabilitation with an application made to the state, uh, offsets 15% of, um, of qualified rehabilitation expenditures made on that owner-occupied residential building. Um, unlike the federal credits, this tax credit is capped. It's the first $150,000 of rehab expenditures that are tax credit eligible. So that caps that state tax credit at $22,500. Even so, uh, that's a nice chunk of income tax owed to offset. So, uh, Again, there's a lot of details to learn about this program, but for right now, um, I hope that those of you watching the presentation will just simply remember, now that you have the National Register Historic District, you're gonna have property owners that are eligible to apply for these tax credits. Um, they can, they might benefit a current building owner. They might be used uh, as an incentive uh, during a sales transaction for a building, or they might be used um, in a downtown re uh, revitalization or economic development context when you can um, use these credits to attract the buyers uh and the building work that you want to see in your downtown so you got to ask yourself is the property listed in the national register or is it contributing to a national register historic district does the building owner have federal and state income tax to offset with a tax credit will both the interior and the exterior building work meet historic preservation guidelines and is the owner or developer willing to compile an application and allow for that application review to run its course? And if the answer is yes, you've got uh, you've got a good candidate for for these tax credits. Um, and that's the end of my talk. Um, so you know, remember that the program is out there for you. Um, tell your friends and neighbors, remember to use the tax credits um, as an incentive in your downtown. Um, and you're welcome to contact me and you're welcome to send property owners and property buyers to me just to learn more uh, about the program. My name and number are listed right here. And when we get out of this pandemic and, and things are a little bit more back to normal, um, I'm available to come up and, and speak to groups and also to speak to individual property owners about the tax credits. So thanks so much for your attention. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Bye bye. Hello, I am Jen Rose. I'm the National Register Coordinator with the North Carolina State Historic Preservation Office. And I am here today to provide you with a general overview of the National Register of Historic Places and um, what the National Register does and does not do. The goal of historic preservation is to protect the built environment from demolition in the name of progress, especially for highways and urban renewal, as well as other modern development. For that reason, the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 was passed. 
It established a federal grants program to aid in preservation for historic properties. It required all federal agencies to take historic properties into consideration in project planning and developed and created the National Register of Historic Places. Some of the State Historic Preservation Office's various programs are listed here, but the National Register is core to most of our programs. In North Carolina, around 3,000 non-archaeological National Register properties have been listed, including both individual properties and historic districts. Resource types that can be listed in the National Register include buildings, structures, these are functional and not built for human shelter, sites, objects, and districts. National Register properties may be listed on individual merit or as shown here can be listed as a historic district. Historic districts have a concentration of resources that share historic significance. Properties eligible for the National Register are generally at least 50 years old and significant under at least one of the four National Register criteria listed here. And these are criterion A, association with an important historic event or trend, Criterion B for association with the productive life of an individual significant in their field compared to their peers. Criterion C, which in a nutshell, we refer to as significant for architecture. Or criterion D, which we often refer to as the archaeology criterion, but it is for the site's ability to potentially yield information. There are certain property types that are not eligible for the National Register unless they meet special National Register criteria considerations. These include religious properties, moved properties, birthplaces or graves, cemeteries, reconstructed properties, commemorative properties, and properties less than 50 years old. To be eligible for the National Register, a property must possess historic significance and it must retain sufficient historic integrity to convey that significance. There are seven aspects of integrity, location, setting, design, materials, workmanship, feeling, and association. Properties individually listed in the National Register have a higher bar for integrity. We're looking at the exterior and interior and how it individually reflects historic importance. There's generally a bit more leeway in a historic district when you're thinking about the historic property as a collection of buildings. A house might have a few changes, but still contribute to the district's significance. And we're not really as concerned about the changes that may have occurred on the interior in most cases. Within a district, properties are labeled as contributing or non-contributing. Properties contributing to a district's significance are eligible for all of the benefits of listing, just like an individually listed property. Non-contributing properties were either constructed outside of the period of historic significance or date within the period but have been substantially altered. District boundaries must include a high concentration of contributing resources and are drawn to exclude non-contributing properties where possible to maintain a strong and contiguous district. We also can't jump over a big swath of recent development or an area of demolition, for example, to pick up outlying areas. So what does the National Register do and not do? The National Register is primarily an honorary designation. It helps the resources consideration and government planning processes. 
federal agencies also consider impacts on National Register eligible properties. So not just National Register listed properties. The National Register allows the public to nominate public property. It only lists private property if owner or a majority of private owners do not submit formal objections. It can increase public awareness of a resource and can be a great way to document its history. National Register may open doors to preservation incentives, and it does stimulate economic development. The National Register does not limit or restrict the rights of private owners to use, develop, or sell their property. It does not require an owner to repair, preserve, or maintain it. It does not require you to open your property up to the public for tours. And to the surprise of many people, the National Register does not prevent demolition. People often confuse the National Register of Historic Places with local historic designation. These are not the same programs, and the National Register does not have the same kind of legal teeth that a local designation has. The National Register is non-regulatory and provides little protection for properties beyond environmental review. Properties with local designation are regulated by local preservation ordinances. Often the two programs are confused because many areas have both designations, often with slightly different boundaries. When checking your building status, it's always good to ask the State Historic Preservation Office for National Register questions, but also double check with the local planning office if any local designation questions may come up. The greatest attraction to National Register listing in recent years has been potential availability of state and federal financial incentives for historic rehabilitation. If you're contributing in a historic district or individually listed in the National Register, you might be eligible for income producing or non-income producing rehabilitation tax credits, depending on if your project qualifies. Please contact Jennifer Cathy, the restoration specialist in our Western Regional Office, if you are thinking about undertaking a rehabilitation tax credit project. Jennifer will walk you through the programs and provides excellent restoration advice. Contact Jennifer before you touch the building. It's always easier to plan ahead than to undo things. So what's next? If a private owner in a proposed National Register district wants to submit a formal objection, they can submit a notarized statement of objection to the State Historic Preservation Officer at the mailing address shown here. If the majority of private owners in a newly proposed historic district objects, we cannot list the district. We appreciate getting notarized objections prior to the State Review Board meeting, which would be before October 14th this year. So if we can, then we can include that in the State Review Board's materials. But we will still forward any correspondence, including objections we received to the National Park Service up until the review period ends. Letters of support are great as well. Owners are not required to submit statements of support for counting, but we welcome anyone who wishes to submit a letter of support. And you can mail that to the State Historic Preservation Officer at that same address prior to October 14th as well. So what are the next steps? Uh, we will present the Downtown Sparta Historic District at the October 14th North Carolina National Register Advisory Committee meeting. And that is our State Review Board. That virtual meeting is broadcast live on YouTube. And as of now, we plan to perhaps also have some limited in-person viewing options. Um, at our Archives and History Building in downtown Raleigh at 109 East Jones Street. You can find meeting details as we approach October 14th on the North Carolina Secretary of State's meeting calendar and on the State Historic Preservation Office's website. 
After the State Review Board, our staff finalizes and sends all of the approved nominations to the National Park Service. The National Park Service has 45 days to review and they have the final say and they will notify us if it's officially approved. And then I can take any questions um, people may have. They can feel free to email me. Um, my email is posted here. Um, I'm also available if you want to message me this way to set up a time for a call if there's any, any questions that I can answer for you. Don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for your time.